To access your Google Calendar, there's a couple of ways to get there. The easiest is to click on the nine square menu on the top right hand side of your email inbox and just click on the calendar icon. Now the other way you can get there, if you notice this address, it's just calendar.google.com. So that's another easy way is just type that into your address bar and uh, it'll bring you straight to this view of your calendar. Now by default, it's going to show the week view. You can flip between day, week, month, four day, and agenda-based view. On the left-hand side, you'll notice that familiar red button. Now that's how you can create an event. And if you click the Create button, it will bring you to the new event creation screen. I'm just gonna go back here. If you notice to the right side, there's what's called a quick add feature. And if you click that, you could type dinner with Michael, 7 p.m. tomorrow. And as soon as I click add, you'll notice that at 7 p.m. tomorrow, I have a new item on my calendar that says dinner with Michael. So it's fairly intuitive to use and it's a quick way to add things to your calendar without going through the full process. So if we click create, we can go dinner with Michael. We could select uh, tomorrow and uh, let's change it to lunch with Michael. So we'll go 11.30 a.m. and uh, we'll do it for an hour and a half. Now, you'll notice the time zone button. This is important. If you're dealing with people that are in a different time zone than you, uh, or perhaps a meeting starts in one time zone and ends in another one due to a flight or something like that, uh, you can choose the time zone option, and you can specify the time zone that you want to create your appointment in. And that way, when you send this to someone who's in a different time zone, it's going to translate the, the change in time from your time zone to their time zone. You can specify whether it's an all-day appointment or if it's a repeating appointment. Perhaps it happens once a week, once a month, uh, or uh, once a day. And uh, you can choose your options here. You can have it automatically end after an, a specific number of occurrences or on a specific day. So for instance, we could say as of the 26th, this appointment no longer happens. Now, under event details, you can choose the location. So if this is going to happen at Starbucks, you can choose which Starbucks. And if you're using the app on your phone, it will actually allow you to quickly click the location to navigate using Google Maps to that location. You can also add guests. So we could say that we'd like to add info at Clearbridge uh, to this. Um, if you're using a meeting room, um, and in some environments we have meeting rooms uh, enabled, so you can uh, specify uh, uh, which meeting room you'd like to use. Uh, if you have a meeting room and you'd like it to be added to this list, just let us know. Go back to the guests. Um, you can specify what kind of permissions guests can have. So if you want to give guests the ability to modify the event, just check that option off. You can choose the calendar that you want this to go on. Now, by default, you're only going to see your calendar, but if you've got access to multiple calendars, you'll want to choose the, the relevant calendar to create the appointment on. You can add a description. Now, this might be an agenda. And if you wanted to, you could add an attachment to the, uh, to the meeting. You can specify a color that it will show up on in your calendar, so let's choose red and you can create as many notifications as you'd like. So if you'd like a notification 15 minutes before, an hour before, and maybe you'd like it one day before, you can create three notifications as long as you're using the app on your phone, uh, whether it's iOS or Android, and you have notifications turned on, this will pop up to remind you. You can choose whether you're available or busy during this time, and what the visibility of this, uh, of this particular calendar item is. By default, just, uh, just leave it as it's currently set. And once you're done, you can click the Save button. And you'll see that uh, I've added uh, Lunch with Michael to my calendar. You'll notice that it's got a different color uh, attached to, uh, to that particular appointment. And depending on the uh, view that I'm looking at, you'll see it shows up uh, in, with different formatting. If I wanted to edit that item, I could click on it. It will pull, um, pull up the Edit option. I could add a note to say, yes be there and I could say I'm only going to attach it to this one Im imitation so you can see it's quite intuitive I can also drag and drop so if the appointment changed tomorrow I could choose whether I wanted to send an update and that's just a quick drag and drop on the uh, on the calendar on the left hand side you can expand and contract the the mini calendar 
which you can jump around on dates for. You can see which calendars you have. So by default, you've got your own calendar, you'll have a birthday calendar, and you'll have a reminders calendar. And you can subscribe to other people. So if you wanted to add someone to your calendar, you would just type their name in here and uh, click off and you'll see that their calendar now shows up in line with yours. Now this is um, important to note is that by default, that individual's calendar is going to be overlaid on yours. If you want to uncheck that, you just uh, click on it and uh, click on it again to, uh, to check it back off. So this way, if you're trying to look at uh, whether or not this time slot would work for this particular person, you can just uncheck and recheck. And you can add as many of these as you would like to your calendar. Next, uh, if you go into the More option, you'll notice that you can print the calendar. So if you're looking to print off a copy of a calendar to take into a meeting, you can do that from here. And finally, if you go to Settings, you can change your view of the calendar. You can go into Settings. You can specify your time zone, uh, the, the duration of a meeting by default, the day of the week that you'd like to start on, and the default view that, uh, that shows up. There's a number of customization options here for, for your preferences. Last but not least, you'll notice there's that familiar offline option under the cogwheel, and we click on the Install from Web Store option. This is going to bring us to a Chrome extension that once installed, it will sync this calendar offline. So whether you have an internet connection or not, you'll be able to go to calendar.google.com to review your calendar. And that's perfect if you're on a laptop and you're in the air. That's all there is to know about the calendar. So once you're ready to navigate back to your email, just click the menu option, choose email, or flip uh, your tab back to the inbox.